5J stream load waterfalls and meandering. Pretty picture. Okay, stream erosion. Streams move particles by solution, which is dissolved like salts. Okay. Suspension, held up by the current. Saltation, bounced along the bottom. Traction or creep, which are two terms used for rolling around the bottom. Creep is used way too many times. Sometimes slow landslides are called creep as well. Now you mentioned it, and I think I was called creep a few times. All right. So, oh, look, there goes the ducky. All right, solution. There's a little oval drawn here, but you really can't see it. When salt, for instance, is put in water, the NaCl um, goes into free ions of sodium, NaL, and chlorine, Cl. So they're not attached anymore, basically. And uh, you can't really see that if you've ever put a spoonful of salt in some water. It doesn't change the water's look. Okay. Next, we have suspension. This is the fine stuff carried. That's why a stream looks brown, because it's carrying suspended. It's not always polluted when it's brown. It's just carrying dirt. And saltation is bouncing along the bottom of the slightly bigger particles. And traction is the rolling of bigger particles still. All of these things, the more water, the faster it's moving, the more of this it can do. We refer to all of that stuff, the suspended stuff, the solution stuff, the saltation, um, all of that is called the stream load. Any sediment that it's moving is called the stream load. Now on to waterfalls. This, many of you should recognize, is Niagara Falls. It's the American Falls. Um, I'm assuming that's the uh, photographer's family. Um, so here's the American Falls traveling over. Here's Goat Island out here. And there's some people looking at the falls there. There's a bridge over to the left that you can go across. If you've never been there, you should someday. Okay, how does a falls form? Okay, in New York State, for instance, <clears throat> Niagara Falls form this way. The rocks of New York are tilted towards the south. Uh, they're tilted at about two degrees in New York State, which isn't a lot, but it, so it looks flat to us most of the time, but they do have a little tilt to them. And yet the landscape is tilted to the north. And so the water of Niagara River, for instance, is flowing this way, downhill, gravity, you know, and it at some point goes over the harder rock, which is called the Niagara Escarpment, um, which is a uh, dolomite, nice hard rock. And then underneath that is some shale. So when the water gets to the shale, the shale is easily eroded. It's less resistant. The cap rock, as we call it, the, um, the dolomite is more resistant to weathering. So this starts to eat away at the shale a little bit. And eventually that causes it to kind of drop over that edge. Okay. It does erode the hard rock a little bit, but does the soft rock a lot faster. Eventually, it actually starts to fall over, and the water is now gouging out what we call a plunge pool down here. Okay, And you start to get usually a little cave behind the water. Okay, And as that continues to erode backwards, eventually the weight of this cap rock becomes too much, and it collapses and it falls. So now the falls that used to be, if we line this up, used to be here is now back here. Okay, and this will start to gouge its way back again, collapse, gouge its way back. And because the rock is tilted like this, it'll actually make the falls higher and higher as you go. So Niagara Falls started way down by Lewiston, which is almost all the way to um, Lake Ontario, and it's crept back about halfway to Lake Erie um, at its current location in Niagara Falls. Uh, if you let it go another 15,000 years or so and humans weren't intervening, which we 
steal a lot of the water for electric power. Um, it would make it all the way back to Buffalo and eventually make it all the way to Lake Erie. And then it would just flood the whole thing as Lake Erie drained into it and there would be no more falls. Okay, so 15, 20,000 years, uh, maybe more because of the hydroelectric stuff. We, we take some of the water away. Not all the water is going over Niagara Falls as say uh, the first settlers saw. Okay, speaking of, in 1678, when people first recorded, uh, white people, I should say, recorded any history of seeing Niagara Falls, this is where it was. Okay, this is that goat island, the farthest uh, you can go on the American side, and this is the Canadian Falls. Okay, horseshoe shaped, it's called Horseshoe Falls. Okay, so that's where it was in 1678. And it has continued to move backwards, and this picture is from 2011. And if we got a 2020, 21 picture or so, we would be back a little more. Okay. So it's gradually moving towards the south, towards Buffalo. Okay, I was lucky enough as a seven-year-old twerp uh, to get to go up and see the American Falls with no water. Okay? How this happened is people built a dam back up here where the river splits around Goat Island. Okay, more of the water goes over the Canadian side than the American, so it's a little easier to dam this side. So they dam that up and the water mostly stopped. You can still see there's some coming over, but it was enough for construction workers to get out here. They were worried that some of these ledges were unsafe. Now there's railings up, but idiots go over it and try to sit on the side. And they were worried that, you know, the weight of some people on there might cause them to collapse. So. They had to do this huge project to prevent stupid people from doing stupid things, okay? Um, and this is before selfies, so I imagine it would be even worse now. So they got in here, and they uh, dynamited a little and, and jackhammered some of it off. Uh, it wasn't as bad as they thought it was, actually. Um, again, in the 80s, they blasted off a section because of the same reason, um, but that they didn't Close, they just closed the park down for a day and used dynamite. Okay, but they actually shut it off. It was kind of cool. Okay, now to Letchworth. The first state geologist was James Hall, and he was up visiting uh, the Letchworth Gorge to check it out. <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Hall brought his wife along, and she sketched this picture. Okay. For people who know the Middle Falls, um, uh, actually Lower Falls, I mean, where the bridge is, this is it. Not the railroad bridge, but the walking bridge. This is Table Rock, the little flat area, and this is Cathedral Rock. Okay, um, at the bridge was built over here, where my cursor is moving, and <clears throat> then there's a little path that goes around the edge, and then there's a sign that says, don't climb up on this, and usually you see people up on there. Um, so that's that rock. But notice, this is why I want you to see this drawing, the falls is right there. Okay. Also notice there aren't a lot of trees over here. Most of the trees at Letchworth area were um, cut down by settlers. And um, the things we see in Letchworth today are planted by the Park Service and by Letchworth himself, who had many, many trees planted there. Okay, this is a, from the 2000s, a picture. This is Cathedral Rock. This is Table Rock. There's where the bridge was built. And the falls, when Mrs. Hall drew it, was here. But the falls is nowhere in sight. It's way around the corner up there. Here's a postcard from the 1930s. And this is the first landing of the steps going down towards the footbridge. And uh, you can see the falls is right here. For those of you that are very familiar with the park, it's not there anymore. Now here's one from the 40s. This is at the bottom of that flight of stairs. And if you look at this lady in the red sweater, 
right behind her is where the bridge is. Okay, and you can see the falls is right there. Okay, 1990s, roughly the same place as that postcard. Um, you can see the falls is way back there. It used to be here in the 40s. So 50 years later, it's all the way back there. Okay, 1930s, when this bridge was new, okay, it was built to look at the falls. Forties, and from 1990s, the falls is kind of going around the corner back there. You actually have a hard time seeing it from the bridge now. Okay, now into meandering streams. Okay, when a stream moves fast, it goes over things. When it starts moving a little slower, it starts to go around stuff. And once it gets a curve, it gets curvier. Okay, and here's why. When you go around a track, let's say you're running a race, if you pass on the outside of a curve, you have to move faster to keep up with the people on the inside of the curve. Okay? So water has to do the same thing to get around this curve it has to move faster around the outside. Okay, and then as it comes to this curve, it moves faster around the outside over here, and then moves towards the outside again as it zigzags around. So if we look at side views, here's AA. This is a profile, and the stream is fairly symmetrical, which means it's, it's even, like if you slice it down the middle, it's kind of a mirror image on either side. Okay, so the fastest is right in the middle, just under the surface. No friction, less friction with the bottom, less friction with the top. And so just underneath the surface in the middle is the fastest. Okay, when it goes around the curve at B, okay, and you take a slice now, it moves faster on the outside of the curve, so it erodes more at the outside of the curves and makes it uneven here. It's deeper on the outside of the curve. Now, as it comes around to C, the outside of the curve's over on the right now, and so it's deeper on that side, okay? So what happens is, is this keeps eroding more and more away from this, and more and more from that, and so it gets curvier. So where is erosion the greatest? Ba -ba -da -da, the outside of a curve. Where does the river flow fastest? Center down from the surface a little bit. And of course, towards the outside of the curve. Okay, are stream sediments sorted, same size or unsorted? Okay, water tends to sort things because it travels at the same speed. Okay, as it slows up a little, it drops the biggest particles there, and then way down the river, it slows up a little more, it drops the next biggest size particles, so it's sorting them out, okay? So they are in fact sorted and if you think about rocks you found in a stream, are they angular or round? Right, water rounds things out. It rounds out hills, it rounds out individual rocks and sediments. So rounded and sorted. Okay, so deposition tends to be opposite of erosion. So if the stream moves fastest on the outside of the curve, it moves slowest inside of the curve, which means it'll drop some stuff. Okay, so deposition is greatest on the inside of the curve. And that's because that's where it has the lowest velocity. Hey, if you look at a curve of a stream, not when it's flood time, um, but if, even if you go up by um, Dollar General and look at the bridge there, okay, on the inside of the curve, there's a sandbar. Okay, the outside of the curve 
at Dollar General goes right up against the cement wall that they built to control the stream. Okay, so when the water's not really high, you get this sandbar on the inside of the curve. All right, now we're going to look at a whole river. Where is deposition greatest near the source? Remember, that's where it starts, or the mouth where it ends or goes into a lake or ocean. And that's the mouth. It's like a water slide. You go fast, you go fast. They want you to stop. What do they do? They put a pool at the bottom, okay? And it slows you up. Okay, so as it hits a lake or ocean, it slows just like you do on a water slide. And then slowing water can't handle all those big particles and it drops them. This is Lake Ontario. Um, this is where the Genesee River comes into Lake Ontario. This is the beach where I often slept as a teenager. I hung out here, okay? Um, and there are a couple of walls built here. But you can see the brownness of the Genesee River. And here's two interesting things from before. You can see the brown go this way. Okay, that means there's a longshore current going from right to left here. And you also remember if you build a solid wall along here, sand builds up. So notice you got this nice sand beach here and virtually none there, maybe a few feet of beach over there. Okay, so um, it's coming out here and you notice as you get out to the end here, the water clears up. That's because the sand has settled out. Okay, if we look at that a little more, you can see the sand projecting out into here, carrying over to there, and it starts to settle out over here. Okay, so in this one, which direction is Lake Ontario's longshore current going? That way. Now we're going to look at oxbow lakes and how they form. Okay, these are oxbow lakes, which I mentioned before. Okay, I think I did, yeah, last section. And they are actually pinched off parts of the river. Okay, so the outside of a curve um, erodes more. Okay, so these are U-shaped lakes created when meanders are pinched off. So this is the outside of the curve. It's eroding towards the right. Now as we come around, this is the outside of the curve, and it's eroding to the left. So if this is going to the right, this is going to the left, at some point they'll meet. And when they meet, it takes the shortest route and skips that and eventually sediment will build up along the shore and block that off and this will become an oxbow lake. Here's one over here where the river used to go. Here's one over here, bunch back here. Okay, there's the oxbow thing. That's the U-shape. All right, so here is that in a diagram. Um, erosion is orange, deposition is yellow. So you can see outside of the curve, orange, inside yellow. And so it keeps eroding towards each other. And eventually these two meet. The stream decides to take the easy route straight and leaves this part here as the Oxbow Lake. Okay, this is in Geneseo. This is down along here, uh, 20A. Okay, as you're going to Geneseo, there's the bridge right here, people fish over here, and then you come up the hill to the traffic light and turn left to go to Geneseo. All right, so this is the Genesee River at that point. Here is an oxbow lake. It's right there. There's another one over here, but I can't get an image of it. I haven't been able to get an uh, aerial image, but there's one forming right over here. Okay, here's an old one. Trees grew around the scar, drew, grew right around the river like they do here. 
and then when it got pinched off the trees are still there and the farmers were working around it when the river used to be there and they continue to work around it okay unless they decide to bring in bulldozers or something these over here have some streams left in them but they are scars from where the genesee used to be okay lots of them i think that one's a lake over there pond okay so that's the oxbow more oxbows um, here is the genesee river um, you can see it twisting okay here is that oxbow we were just looking at and you can see it twist here's another one about to form here's an oxbow here's another one that probably will be okay another one that probably will be so the river is really zigzagging you can also see this contour map there's very few contour lines around here this is the floodplain so it's been widening its plane and zigzagging back and forth and then you can see the contour lines going up the hill up the hill okay so that's the valley okay here is a video of a stream table so this is just a bunch of sand in a stream table um, which is I don't know a box basically and there's like a little lake made down here with a piece of plastic to dam that away and a drain down here after it goes through a screen and they're just gonna start some water over here okay and this is time-lapse so it hit something here starts going around it <clears throat> now it's going to continue to erode that way oh, can't get my pointer here it'll continue to erode this way this one will erode this way okay here's some others starting to form here that'll go up get curvier see those will widen making the floodplain in here widening its channel and down here it's actually forming what we call a delta okay so um, if the drain weren't here it would kind of make kind of a triangle coming out like that with a like kind of fan to end like this okay but you can see those meanders get wider and wider and wider okay so old rivers are going to do that just about over you get the picture okay got a couple of questions to answer and you're done